are going to consider another method of solving first order ordinary differential equation. I believe you are very happy to know about that. So in this video, we are going to consider a method called Bernoulli equation. See, Bernoulli is more or less like um, linear, but there is just only one thing that makes the equation different from linear. So I'm going to introduce you to that method and you will see how we can go ahead and do it. But the only thing we're going to do is that um, whenever we see Bernoulli, I will show you how to identify Bernoulli. Immediately you identify it, then the next thing will be, we are going to reduce it. So once you're able to discover that this problem is Bernoulli equation, then we're going to reduce it to linear. Then we solve it. But before we proceed, let's quickly uh, revise. Let's revise those methods that we've learned. The first method is uh, direct integration and look at this one, it's very simple like this. We only have the y dx equals f of x. In this case, all you need to do is just to put the x beside f of x. Then you can easily integrate. So there's, no, there's no problem with this type of method, with this type of first order. It's very simple, just cross multiply or multiply both sides by dx, then you do the you carry out the integration. The second method is separation of variables. What is so special about this one is that um, we have the problem to be the y dx cos of fx comma y, but the only condition is that um, looking at the problem, we must be able to easily separate the variable fx comma y. So in this case, the variable fx comma y will now give us x of x, y of y. That is how we do about we, go, we undo such a problem. We call it uh, separation of variables. So we're going to consider the third example. The third case now is called homogeneous. In this case of homogeneous, we have the y dx cos of fx comma y. But looking at it directly, we cannot easily separate the variables. So what do we do? We now introduce another function called y equals to vx. But when we do this, we must be able to know that um, upon substituting the problem into it, upon substituting y equals to v of x into the problem, then it will help us to separate the variables. So that at the time, by the time you introduce, so you substitute v equal, y equals to v of x inside f x comma y, then what would happen is that um, you'll be able to separate the variables because in that case, the independent variable x will disappear. So let's consider another example. We call it linear. And look at this one. I think I've introduced you that in the case of linear, our function f x comma y is equal to what q of x minus p of x multiplied by y. So the fifth example now, the fifth category is called Bernoulli, which we are going to consider in this video. And in that case, if you look at Bernoulli and linear, you notice that the only difference is that um, the q of x is multiplied by y raised to power n. You can see that. So these are the methods that we've studied so far. So in this video, I will now explain to you how to go about Bernoulli, how to handle Bernoulli, but it's very simple. Oh, of course, you know that I will definitely introduce the problem to you. So let's consider example one of Bernoulli. As you can see now in the screen, on the screen, you see that in this case, we have uh, one over x to be my p of x. But here you notice that n is two and I have y squared multiplying x in my q of x. So please take note of that. In this example one, in my q of x, my q of x is in terms, my q of x is x multiplying by y raised to power n and here n is what? n is two. So let's consider another example. In this example too now, you will notice that here, uh, my q of x is not something I can easily get like that. But the first thing is that you need to rearrange. By the time you rearrange, you will not see clearly that um, our... In this case now, my p of x is what? Is 1 over x. Then what about my q of x? My q of x is cos x over x raised to power 3. But here you notice that n is equal to 4 is the problem now. So I have y equals to y raised to power 4, which is the major thing that I will focus on. And then let's look at example 3. In this example, you will notice that n is also 4 because I can see clearly now that I'm having y raised to power 4 then exponential 3x. So in that case, y raised to power 4 will be my starting point, will be the first thing I will need to first of all remove from the problem, from q of x. Then the last example I'm going to present to you now is example 4. And in this case of example 4, you will also see clearly that um, my q of x, it has a multiplier of y raised to power 3. 
which means that why is part 3 is the first thing that we need to first of all address in order to solve this problem so now let's consider uh, a typical example this is what we call Bernoulli in this case you will see that um, the dependent variable word is y and we have the part word to be raised to power n so what we are going to do now is that we are going to reduce this problem to linear problem now is y raised to power n you will notice that this is the only thing that makes this problem to be different from that of um, linear so what we are going to do is that we divide both sides by this so by the time you divide both sides by y over n this is what we are going to observe don't forget that by the time you divide by y raised to power n y raised to power n will come up so we obtain this expression so the next thing we are going to do now is that um, we focus on this part when we focus on this part we let this one to be our z and z is now another dependent variable that we are coming about so this is what we now obtain you now notice that here yeah, i've replaced this one with, uh, with my z so i will have this but notice that um, we can actually come back to this expression to find our dz dx to be equals to what is that don't forget that here z is depending on y and what we are looking for is the z dx so that means that what we need is something like the z dy then dy dx but from this problem what is actually my dz dy you will notice that the z dy is not the same thing as you bring this one down to give you 1 minus n mm? then you subtract 1 from the power that will give you 1 so by that you have 1 minus n then minus 1 isn't it then what about this i will write this y dx so which means that you cannot see that the z dx is not equals to 1 minus n then y into bracket y raised to power minus n the y the x so the only thing that remains now is that uh, you will notice that um uh if i should make this one the subject of formula here i will have uh this one will come to this side isn't it and that will give me one divided by one minus n the z the x then is equals to y raised to the power minus n the y the x so let me now return this one back to this problem so which means that i will need to change this expression so this one will now give me 1 divided by 1 minus n the z dx plus p of z is equals to q so this is another form of Bernoulli now you now see that in this problem have been able to reduce Bernoulli equation to linear because in this case now this one is more or less like linear now what is so special about linear is that um, we have the rate of change of the dependent variable which is the independent variable then we have p which is a function of the independent variable multiplied by the dependent variable then is equals to what q so this is linear meanwhile this is what Bernoulli but the only thing here is that i've changed the dependent variable this is the problem we want to solve and looking at this we see that this problem is indeed Bernoulli because we have y squared here so this will be the first thing we are going to do and what is this is that we are going to divide both sides by y squared by the time we divide both sides by y squared this is what we are going to get and you can see that in this case now this one we cancel this and that was exactly the reason why we started by dividing both sides by y squared so by the time we simplify now what we now notice is that uh, we are having y raised to power 1 minus 2 here and y raised to power minus 2 that will give me y so the next thing i'm going to do now is that i will assign z to be this so i can now say that let my z is equals to y raised to power minus 2 that is what minus 1. so if my z is equals to y raised to power minus 1 then that means that i've turned this one toward to z so the next thing now is for me to obtain my the z dx but don't forget that what I'm having is z is depending on what on y. So using chain rule, I can say that uh, my is the z dy multiplied by dy dx. So from this expression, what is the z the y? The z the y here is what minus y y raised to power what minus one minus one, which is same thing as minus one y raised to power what minus two. So I will substitute that one back to this space so that I can have my the z dx is equal to minus 1 y raised to power to minus 2 then dy dx now if you look at this very well you notice that uh, 
this expression here, are we together? Is almost similar to this expression here. So what I'm going to do now is that thing. I will need to multiply both sides by minus one so that minus one can come to this side. So if you look at this now, you notice that um, I've been able to come up with this expression. So what I will now do is that um, instead of I will go back to this equation one, but instead of writing this expression, I will now change everything. So let's now rewrite our equation one now. So before we proceed, let me quickly summarize. This is the problem we are solving, which is Bernoulli. Then I divide both sides by y squared, which is the problem. And by the time I divide both sides by y squared, then this is what I will have, isn't it? Because by the time you come back here, you put 1 over y squared here. And why am I dividing both sides by y squared? Because this is what actually makes this problem to be Bernoulli. And by the time I divide both sides by this, this one will go. And this one will give me ordinary key of x to be x. And that one makes the problem to be linear. So by the time you divide both sides by y squared, well, by y squared, then you have this expression. And when you have this expression, then you let this one to be or to be another dependent variable, which is what, which is z. And when you have this one to be your z, then you can differentiate both sides. Don't forget, how did I come up with this one? I just come up with the fact that uh, if my z is depending on y, then it means that the rate of change in z with respect to x is same thing as what the z, the y, then the y, the x, and this is called what chain rule. And from chain rule, what is my z dy now? I can differentiate this one with respect to y to give me this. All together, then at the same time, I can have the y, the x. Don't forget that there is minus one here. Before it's the z dy, the z dx. But then you multiply both sides by minus one, then the minus will come to that. That's how we obtain this one. So when we have this now, what is the next step now? Is that then we've uh, we now need to return everything back to the program. Don't forget that this is uh, this expression here is this. Hmm? So let me change this one with this. So this one will now give me minus the z dx, then plus one over x, and this is not my z. Z equals what? Z equals of x. So the next thing is that then I will need to multiply both sides by minus one to give me the z dx, then minus one over x z is equals what x. So the next thing is now is that you see that this is now what a linear. So that's what I was trying to say the other time that we normally reduce Bernoulli to what to linear. So what is the next step is that I'll find my integrating factor. So what is that? You will see that in this case, I have my integrating factor to be exponential minus nx. And you know that this is the same thing as exponential then x minus 1. So which means that my integrating factor is what x minus 1. So what is the next thing I that then? I will come back to multiply both sides of this expression by the integrating factor. And I've explained to you before, I said if you multiply both sides by this, what you have, this is the expression you obtain. And I told you, I said this is more the same thing as the x the dx. What are we looking for? We are looking for z. What is the integrating factor? The integrating factor is, is x minus 1, which is the same thing as x minus 1. You can check. If you expand this one, this is what you get. So they are the same thing. And the next thing is now for us to integrate. And by the time you integrate, you see now you now have z, x minus 1. Then this one will give me, this one will cancel one another. Then it will have 1. By the time you integrate 1, you have x, then plus c. Then don't forget that we are not looking for z. What we are looking for is what is y. So we need to actually return z to be y. So we cannot say that the solution is y minus 1, x inverse is equal to x plus c, which is still the same thing as 1 over yx is equal to x plus c. That is the solution of Bernoulli.